Hello there, YouTubers. Here we have a not-so-recent eBay find. This may or may not be my eBay deal of the year. This is an HP EliteBook mobile workstation, model 8730W. It's a 17-inch high-end laptop, and as you can see, this uh, has quite a huge screen, of course, 17-inch. It's a dream color display, and I really have to say this has to be one of the best laptop screens I've ever seen. This is extremely high resolution, much higher than full HD, so it's really a pleasure to work with this screen. Uh, all the other s hardware is not all that up to date. It has 4 gigabytes of RAM, and while well, it says on the sticker that it has a Core 2 Duo processor, but the previous owner actually once upgraded this to a Core 2 Quad and I'm not so sure that that was done properly because uh, the ventilator fan is always spinning at a rather high speed but it does not bring out any hot air so I'm assuming the processor to heatsink contact is not the best but uh, well that's basically the point of this video just uh, the day before yesterday, my main computer decided to break. It has developed some uh, weird kind of uh, software issue that prevents the Windows from booting up. And right now I don't really have the time nor the patience to really look into that. So I dug out this thing and I'll be using this as my main computer for the time being. So, before I do that, I thought I'd uh, make sure that it's all working fine. Maybe give it some upgrades. I will have to see if I can uh, bump up the RAM a little bit. And, well, I guess we're just going to go from there. So, let me go ahead and uh, start taking this apart. Uh, the keyboard, now this, uh, this does have a Danish keyboard layout of all things. So I used some uh, ugly looking stickers that I got with another laptop that I bought. Those uh, keyboard stickers that they give you. Uh, the keyboard stickers that uh, they gave me actually have a typo. Uh, that symbol does not belong into the German keyboard layout. Well, the keyboard has been removed successfully. It turns out it's not a product of HP, it's a product of China. As you can see, it has a considerable amount of dirt stuck in there. But uh, anyway, here we have the unit itself, and thankfully this is a design that um, I may or may not be able to service. Uh, as you can see, the heatsink is mounted on top of the motherboard, so I don't have to uh, tear the whole thing apart to reach it. And, uh, well, I would like to take this apart, because right away I can see something that I really don't like. That. I don't know what the hell this is. It doesn't look like any sort of uh, heatsink uh, device, material, compound. It's kind of rubbery and very soft. And I really don't know if that belongs right there or not. So... I guess I will try to uh, take this uh, frame off of here so that I can pull this uh, whole assembly off. Since this has a dedicated NVIDIA graphics card in here, uh, it uh, well that's probably what this is all about right here. Um, that should be the processor right there. Well, it turns out the upper panel just pulls off and then you have the innards pretty much exposed. Still, I have to say, HP really turns this into quite a nerve-wracking challenge, because a lot of parts are just clipped in place, and you get some very, very vicious noises when you release those tabs. I guess it's all designed that way, and I'm not doing anything wrong, so, wow. <laughs> This, uh, this really isn't nice to work on, I can tell you that much. Anyway, uh, I'm now going to try, I've already taken out this monitor cable, I'm going to try to remove all these screws and hopefully 
this whole unit is just going to come out once I got this um, disconnected. Now, you can definitely tell the previous owner has been in here and he hasn't done a very professional job. Um, let's just see. Uh, here we got a screw from uh, the bottom panel and uh, let's just say I didn't scratch that thing up that badly. So, um, yeah, and then uh, the connector that this thing plugs into, it's a little ribbon cable, and uh, you have these little uh, tabs that pull out, like right here for the, uh, for the keyboard. That tab on the upper panel is uh, right there. It's actually uh, broken. This thing just comes out, which it's not supposed to do, and I didn't do that either. So, yeah, the previous owner definitely uh, got to this. Oh, I really have to say, this laptop is uh, quite a bit different than uh, what I thought. Now, initially, I said, well, okay, the big heatsink has got to be the processor, so you're going to take that out. There it is, and uh, I actually had to take it out, because I can't get the other one out without removing this. But, uh, as you can see, the heatsink is actually split into two units. Now, you can see on this one, we got plenty of heatsink grease right there. And um, there it is, as you can see, two big heat pipes running to, uh, well, this one doesn't actually go to a heat sink, but this one has quite a huge one right there. But um, as it turns out, the thing that hides under there is a graphics card. And I was like, what? Yep, this thing actually has a graphics card that you can remove. It's uh, very unexpected. There was a screw missing from this, so uh, I don't know, maybe this has been upgraded as well. Who knows? Um, but uh, heatsink grease on that actually looks to be fine. So I'm going to redistribute that a little bit, but other than that I'm not going to mess with it. This weird stuff right here actually does seem to be some sort of a heat conductive uh, thing. It's just sitting on some uh, what I assume are voltage regulators or something. Uh, the video RAM, I guess that's what that is, is also connected to the heatsink as you can see using the same uh, weird stuff. Well, as it turns out, the processor <laughs> it just gets this, uh, this tiny little thing. One heat pipe and uh, the cooling fins on this or, uh, well, not quite, but almost half the size of this. So, <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> quite unexpected. As you can see, we do have, uh, we do have something right there. Uh, maybe one of these North Bridge, South Bridge, whatever, I don't know. Something chipset related, you can't take it out. And right there, as you can no doubt tell, it is a, uh, well, it is a quad-core processor. I guess uh, one of these uh, squares just contains one Core 2 Duo processor, forming a Core 2 Quad. That kind of makes sense. It says Intel 2006 on there. And other than that, not a whole lot of information. Now, as I uh, get close to this, you can hopefully see... The heatsink grease on this is looking pretty damn sad. Uh, this is extremely dry and brittle. And uh, it's uh, also, uh, where is it, right there on this one. Really doesn't look all that great. Uh, as we maybe scrape it a little bit. Yeah, that's dry. The stuff in the center. I'm not scratching this, I'm just uh, touching it. That's... Not good, definitely doesn't have the kind of behavior that you'd expect from heatsink grease. So I will be replacing that. Um, I actually, uh, I guess you have to turn this with a screwdriver to get that processor out. See if that's right. Uh, okay, well you have to turn it. Oh, and there it goes. There it goes. Oh, still has pins. It's an unusual sight. There it is. And that's the socket. Now, 
This is uh, the bottom of the line uh, Quora 2 quad. It's only 2 gigahertz, unfortunately. The top of the line would be uh, 2.53 gigahertz quad core. Much better, but uh, as you can probably tell, much more expensive. However, uh, I will keep my eyes open and uh, Maybe if I can uh, get a good deal on a, uh, a higher-ended one of these, uh, I'm going to grab it because, obviously, now I know how to take it out. So, well, I guess I'm going to replace my heatsink grease and uh, put it back together. Of course, I'm also going to take the opportunity and uh, blow these fins out real well with the, with the air compressor. Uh, look at that, a nice mirror-like finish on those two cores, once you got them cleaned up. I now got two thin and relatively even layers of uh, heatsink grease. Yes, I know, it's not entirely perfect, but it sure is better than what was there before. And there we have the processor heatsink back in its place, and, uh, well, you can see, that really isn't much. The biggest part really is a graphics card, which I think is kind of crazy, but, uh, oh well. Anyway, now I'll have to clean up that and, uh, see what's up with the heatsink grease on that thing right there. Well, at first it looked fine, but as I try to redistribute it a little bit, I found out that the heatsink grease for the graphics unit is just as bad as what was on the processor. So I got that all cleaned up, as you can see. That surface right there as well, and uh, you can see what I scraped off of there. That is, uh, well, that's rubber, but not heatsink grease anymore. So we're gonna add some new grease to this as well. Cleaned up the ventilator fan and all that with the air compressor, so should all be fine. And there we have some newly covered surfaces, also looking relatively good. Uh, there is still some old heatsink grease left around that uh, processor, graphics processor. I was kind of uh, afraid to uh, scrape off those surface mount devices surrounding it. I guess that would not be a good idea at all. And as you can see, the heatsink is back together. Really scared to find out whether or not putting this all back together is just as much of a challenge as taking it apart. Well, I guess I'll have to find out. I won't be able to use this thing the way it is right now. And there it is, all back together. Miracles do happen, so you can no doubt see. Another thing I've done, I've stolen the uh, track point from a uh, broken ThinkPad to replace the original gray rubber cap that was missing on this. That definitely gives it some character. <laughs> Unfortunately, the only thing I won't be able to do is a RAM upgrade. This has two, two gigabyte sticks of RAM in there. As it turns out, this is still the old DDR2. I do have this 4 gigabyte stick that I took out of my uh, IBM ThinkPad. And as it turns out, this is DDR3, so it does not fit. Uh, the only thing DDR2 that I have is this. But it's only 512 MB, so that would definitely be a downgrade. So I'll have to keep my eyes open for some uh, DDR2 laptop RAM. The video you've just seen was shot in August 2014. It now is January 2015 and I just rediscovered those video files on my computer and I thought that video is too good to uh, just uh, not be uploaded. However, I do want to add some notes to it. Now, I never got around to finishing that video because right after reassembling the laptop, it kind of didn't work anymore. As it turns out, the connection cable going from the screen to the motherboard, and we have seen that in the video, uh, is not working quite right anymore. It must have some bad connections in it. 
and after reassembling the laptop the backlight of the display wouldn't work anymore. Now luckily that actually continued to work just like the Windows installation on my main PC, by the way, I did mention that in the video as well. I was actually able to fix that. It was a bad update that Microsoft had released. Um, anyway, back to this one. Uh, the backlight finally managed to start working again, and it does work now. However, what does not work is the detection whether or not the screen is opened or closed. So it does have a bit of uh, character going on. Unfortunately, what we've done in the video, replacing the heatsink grease, uh, didn't really help at all that much. The ventilator fan is still just as fast and just as noisy as it was before. So anyway, there you have it. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.